on special demand by dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of law students. Uh, what does a law student do to make maximum utilization of his or her time during this pandemic lockdown situation? Number one, read books. It goes without saying. But I would recommend apart from reading academic books, read some, you know, uh, books written by lawyers, which give you a fresher, more practical perspective of things. Mr. Ranjeev Dubey, of course, is a is a you know, is a is one of the best recommendations I could give you his books, Winning Legal Wars, as well as Legal Confidential and the bullshit quotient if you can get your hands on it. Professor Anurag Agarwal of Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, IIMA. I've read a couple of his books. I thoroughly enjoyed them. This uh, book that I recently read called uh, In Your Defense. I do not remember the name of the author. Another great book is Point Made. I believe the name of the author is Richard Suskind, but don't hold me to it. It's been, a, it's been some time since I read that book. Um, apart from that, okay, let's get on to the second thing law students can do. Uh, and if there are any other books that I can remember, I will post them in the description itself. And if you know any good books that helped you grow as a lawyer or as a law student, do post them in the comments. Let's move on to the next one. As a law student, you should be reading judgments. According to me, academic textbooks and commentaries do help. They do give you a little bit of guiding direction into what the law is and how you're supposed to be interpreting it. But a major, major difference in what the books do and what the judgments do and what the judges say is the way they kind of deal with several procedural things which are not really dealt with in intersection with the with the uh, the substantive part of the law to understand how substantive law and procedural law intersect you must read judgments this is what i used to do way back and this is what i do even now any topic on any field of law which I have an interest in, which I want to stay updated on because it keeps my, you know, because it keeps my, you know, it, it, it pays the bills or because I have an interest in it. Either of these two situations, what I do is I, I've, I've had access to Manupatra, SCC and whatnot, but the simplest for me is Indian Kanun. Go on Indian Kanun, go and search for the topic, search for the specific topic rather than the field and see what all is happening in these judgments. And how do you do it? You look for judgments of the Supreme Court and the relevant High Court. And then you look at judgments delivered most recently. It's free for everybody. Go and read those judgments and keep yourself updated on what is happening in your favorite fields of law. The third thing that you can do is attend court. And don't think that because it's you know, it's the pandemic and the courts are shut, that work is not going on. Every single day in this country, there are hundreds of courtrooms which are working, either physically or virtually. And if you can't track these physical courts, at the very least, do go and track down those virtual courts. You guys might, you know, have seen recently how Juhi Chavla posted the virtual court link to her hearing in the in 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 i think her twitter post which led to people coming in and disrupting the the vc hearing and more importantly the judge imposing a cost of rupees 20 lakhs learn from that at least the fact that these vc links are available if i may dare say so almost half of the courts of the delhi high court post their virtual hearing links in the cause list itself for everybody to see on some occasions when i am done with my matter i still you know chill out i i grab some popcorn and i of course with my video off and my mic muted i keep watching all of these proceedings and i keep seeing all these great stalwarts arguing away of course in the comfort of my house wearing my most comfortable jammies and you should do that as well. And perhaps it might benefit you more to sit down with a pen and a, and a notebook and make notes and see 
what is being talked about what is the relevance what is going on and of course you will not be able to understand everything because you don't have the kind of knowledge that these people do and of course forget about what's being discussed on the facts that's not so important but the law the way the arguments are, are the arguments are being addressed the way they are being tackled by the other party the way the judge throws his or her questions the way the responses come from the councils it is an art and you need to learn that if you want to make it in litigation even if you don't even if you want to go into transactional practice or policy or any of the other things that you do you need to remember that this is the foundation at which you will place upon your career wherever you go if it is in any way connected with the law of the land these were three tips that i think every law student should be spending their entire day whatever time they have available to them they should be spending that in doing these three things if you like this video as a law student if you took something out of it and especially if you implemented any of the recommendations that i have given or you've already been implementing i'd love to hear your experiences about the same good luck